Are we ready? Yes. Yes. Oh, all systems go. That's the way we like it. John Peckham Podcast, Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance, beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut. Come over the bridge, go through one set of lights. Pull a Yui, look for the music store with the red neon light. Like and subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your plants, tell your pets. Uh, be on the show with me, reach out, don't be afraid. Uh, Dave will tell you how to have your very own podcast here in our beautiful studio. And we are here today from Trinity Church, is that correct? Yes. Trinity mm-hmm. Church, we have Ray Phillips and Carol Hill, who I can't see, but I'm going to pretend like I can. Carol okay. Hill is over there. Yes, she there. could be wearing a, a any sort of mask or headdress. I wouldn't know, but that's okay because we're here. Uh, Trinity Church. What goes on over there? Who wants to uh, who wants to tell us? Oh, there you go. Well, I can uh, start off by uh, sure letting you know what we're doing. I think we'll talk mostly about the music series that we've been uh, supporting ever since 2017. We've had a music series. And uh, the theme of it, or the concept, is Vital Connections Through Music. And uh, what we've done is uh, we started off with singer-songwriters who are, you know, not well-known, who weren't known in the area, in fact. And then we've, we've moved on to some bands that are more locally known and have a, a more local presence. Oh, that's cool. Uh, where is this church? It's right on Main Street in Portland. It's, oh, okay. it's the big brown stone. You, oh. you cannot miss it. If you're going down Main Street in Portland, it's the big brown stone with the big tower with the clock that does not work. Oh, okay. The clock. But it's right. But, but yet it's right two times a day somehow. Yes. That, that is yes. correct. You know what I mean? <laughs> cool. And, and the music is awesome there. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? Um, why don't we... So whose who's big bright idea was it to start music over there at the church? Well, in 2017, we had a priest in charge named Philip Bjornberg. Okay. And he was really heavily invested in trying to have vital connections throughout the community, whether it's through the church or through um, connections or communications, opening the church up to various groups. And he had a particular affinity for music. So... Vital Connections Through Music was the concept that started the whole thing. And he had a very good friend named Steve Dedman. Uh, Steve Dedman is a uh, singer-songwriter. He was also the lead and really the organizer for a band called Plywood Cowboy. Okay. And uh, that that band had been playing quite a, quite a bit, at least um, back around 2017 up, in, uh, up until COVID. COVID uh, kind of did a number Sure. On them. And um, so they were, were talking about what types of things could we do to um, do a concert and bring people from the community into the beautiful Brownstone Church, which, you know, ordinarily you don't go into it unless you're an Episcopalian. So gotcha. uh, there's some beautiful architecture and stained glass, and the acoustics were great. So they were mulling it over as friends, and they, th- saw, they thought that. Perhaps we can do a concert series. And Steve had a lot of contacts with singer-songwriters. In fact, he ran some workshops. Um, Previous to that, I think he he had been touring. And uh, so we we said, yeah, let's give it a try. And what we wanted to do was not only open up the building and give an opportunity to singer-songwriters, but we also wanted any profits that we made. We wanted it to go to outreach. And so between, between the two desires to open the building, have great music, and uh, provide for some local and in some cases uh, more not local outreach, uh, we came up with the concert series. And the first year we had, I, th- I think we had six concerts. We had three in the spring and three in the fall. And... Um, they weren't particularly well attended because we were just getting off the ground. It, sure. was a, it was a new concept, and some folks were a little uneasy about coming into a church because the concerts are in the sanctuary of, of the church. So it was a little strange to some people. But once people you know, stand up in the altar area and sure. see what the acoustics are, they, they, the performers went wild, and the people in, in the audience were very appreciative. 
So what we, we do is we, we invite these concerts performers to come in. Uh, for some of them, it, it's really cool because they're used to playing in, in bars. And gotcha. people are talking and people are smoking and they're right. not, you know, sometimes they're not really listening to them. <coughs> sure. So they, they got a chance to be in like a, a concert type of, of environment. And right. At, and at the same time, we, we, we provide ref refreshments and breaks and uh, we try and make everyone that comes feel, feel comfortable in, in the space. Cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that sounds like a good, like a good gig, like you say, for some people. So then word gets out. So I would imagine the attendance kind of grew naturally or. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it, it did pretty well. Um, and then COVID hit and everything. It didn't go so well right, right. after that. You got to start all over. Yeah. And uh, are you kind of back to where you were or somewhat? Oh, I think we're better. Oh, oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It, the, the bands now are that we're using are bands that I know of and they're. They have their own following, yeah, yeah, and and they play qu songs that most people know, yep. as opposed to just their own. And, yeah, sure. And so we 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 get a lot better attendance. Hey, that's cool. And everybody's uh, seems to be happy out in the community. People are into it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's a little difficult to get people dancing in the aisles in the <laughs> church, but. <laughs> wow, hey, what what is the? I, I'm not familiar. What is the? Official Episcopalian uh, opinion on dancing in church, or because you, you know, you know the old the old joke. Uh, no, I don't know if I could tell this. Actually, I just <laughs> realized I got myself in there. <laughs> um, why do uh, why do Methodists uh, pull their blinds when they're um, uh, being intimate, so that no one will walk by and accidentally think that they're dancing? Uh. <laughs> anyway. Um, it's cool. So you can cut a rug at the at the church. We 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 yes we it's it's a space for the community. It, it is primarily a worship space, but it's also for the community, and a little bit of dance in it. There's nothing wrong with that. Cool, cool. That's awesome. Um, is the uh, you said the the um, whoever idea it was to start is he still there? Uh, Phil has left. Our, our parish. Okay. He went down to Virginia for a while. Now he is the uh, rector or the priest in charge up at Stores at St. Mark's Chapel up in Stores, which has a wonderful music program because they have uh, some of the students from Stores actually participate in the choir and they also run a lot of, of music programs through the uh, St. Mark's Chapel up on, on the campus. So if you ever have a free Sunday morning and you want to listen to a great choir, you can go there. Wow, that's cool. So he's still doing it, still yes, making it happen wherever he goes. That's cool. And how's the new the new person? Well, right probably not new anymore. But right <laughs> now we don't have a new person. Right oh. now we uh, do not have a priest in charge. Whoa. We are what you call in transition. We're searching for a new priest in charge. Wow. Uh, we we did have a. Um, a priest in charge, but he got sick, and so he had not he ha wasn't at our parish since like before Christmas last year. Wow. So we've been getting on with what you call a supply priest, and okay. we also do a lot of um, lay led services like morning prayers, and and Ray has a small group, a little folk group, and they do a lot of the music. Oh wow! For, for those those services, so we we haven't lost too many people, but we'll we will be very happy once we get a a, a new priest in. Yeah right, right. Yeah, and as far as the music <coughs> series, Carol and I are running this, and we actually have a committee that I'd like to give credit to. Sure. The other members. Please. We have my wife Rita Phillips as part of the committee. Okay. And Carol's husband Jim is part of the committee. Okay. Carla Harris and Judy Henderson. Okay. But so we're, we all work together. Very nice. There's a, there's a lot to do to, to prep for these shows. I bet. I bet, huh? Yeah, I'd like to do a shout out to Marjorie Barrett because even though she says she's not part of the committee, she's always there and doing work. So I don't see how she's not part of the I, committee. I, but I agree. No. I agree. <laughs> and and that, that goes for Sean Denario, mm -hmm. too. Okay. He, he makes the uh, signs for us outside the church. Nice. So people by now, they kind of, <clears throat> they, know to, they know to look out for it. 
they know what to look out for? Yeah, and, and basically we don't have a budget at all for advertising. So we do everything without spending any money. Sure. Because what we're trying to do is maximize the amount of money we can give to the charity. Gotcha. And a right. lot of these bands have been terrific in that right. they charge less than half their normal fees to play. Sure, sure. Wow. That's cool. So um, you, probably between the bunch of you, like you say, how do you reach out and find uh, performers? How, what's the process like? Well, I know a lot of these bands. Oh, okay. Uh, I, have a, I have a couple of bands on my own. And oh, okay. We'll get into these that. These are right. bands throughout the years. That so these are like some of your cronies? So no, so not, <laughs> not that bad. <laughs> and there are other ones that we go out and we see them somewhere and mm -hmm. they look good. And, uh, and the ones that are, are willing to uh, play at a rate that we can make a profit for the, sure. the, the various. Uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, who do you want to um, maybe promote what you have coming up now? Timely, you know what I mean. So we can we can kind of promote what you have coming up, and okay. then we'll work our way back. Okay, right now we we have um, I don't know. Can we see can we see a poster on there? I uh, think yeah, I think so. We we have this, this band called the Centerline Band. Okay. Oh, Centerline. Yep, Centerline Band. Yeah, I think I got you there. And they're coming in on Sunday, November tenth. Oh, okay. At four p.m. Wow, and we're we're doing uh, we're doing a Veterans Day show. Okay, so it's actually the day before Veterans Day. Oh, I got it's you. It's on a Sunday. All right, and the uh, charity we're using is Tunnel to Towers. Okay, and are you familiar with that? Nope. Or? Okay, it it was founded on the nine eleven uh, event where one of the firefighters who was uh, killed rescuing people, his brother, started the. Uh, the Tunnel to Towers, and uh, he, he takes no money at all for, for a salary. or sure. And 95% of what they take in, they give to the actual uh, people on the, on yeah, the right. other end. So right. it, th that's a beautiful charity. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, what, kind of, uh, what kind of music does this band play, Centerline? Do we know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen them play. Oh, yeah? Uh, they play uh, rock and roll country mm -hmm. and blues so they they cover uh, a pretty good gambit of music yeah that's cool that's cool um do you want to talk about your musical history at all i mean you might as well okay well um i started playing by ear with friends okay and believe it or not 40 years ago i actually took lessons from dave here really <laughs> yeah whoa and That's that wild. was to read music because at the time I only played sure. played by ear. Sure. And, and uh, he straightened you out. <laughs> yeah. There he is. Hey. Yeah, you taught him. We just got to that part. Yeah. And wow. so, so. 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah. that's what he's say, saying. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. And uh, Did you know what you were doing 40 years ago? I think the store had just opened. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you're like one of the first. And I have a, a band uh, that we've been together, depends who you ask in my band, but somewhere around 28 years. Wow. And uh, we play all kinds of stuff. Uh, what do you call them? We're called For Fun. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it's sort of a play on words. Originally, there were four of us, and it was For Fun. Oh, I got you. Could be four play, too. Well, yeah, <laughs> easy. That, they, that four play is not playing at the church. Let's just make that clear. <laughs> And then uh, Carol mentioned that we have another f group, this is diff completely different, that we do folk music for Trinity. Oh, that's cool. And yeah. uh, that's me and three others. Nice. All right. Yeah. I'm into that. That's kind of cool. So you play guitar? Yes. Okay, cool. That's cool. Um, Carol, what about, you have a musical background you want to talk about? My only musical background is, uh, I've always sung, whether it was in you know high school, choir or, or whatever and I've been a member of the Trinity Choir for about maybe 35 plus years wow wow yeah that's that's uh that's long enough right yeah and I also when when my husband Jim and I were very young we would go to a lot of concerts we were 
avid concert goers. So we'll, we'll get into that later. Okay. But yeah. Wow, that was fun. No, but I mean, please talk about it. But that's, mm-hmm. that's one of my questions at the end. Oh, okay. Is about. So that's cool. So you've been into music all along. Yes. So this is like a chance to kind of get involved. <coughs> yeah, it's a chance to do something that I ordinarily would never have been able to do in my, in my regular life and career. Yeah. Well, why not? So when you're, th- the priest was like, uh, d- did you just kind of step forward? Or when they were like, uh, you know, when he said, I have an idea of putting this thing together, making it happen. Well, we had a, we have a outreach committee. It w- it's called Living God's Mission. And uh, it, it came out, we were having discussions uh, with a, a, a larger group as to what types of things can we do for, for outreach. And it, it really, it, it started there. And then uh, Phil and Steve, really created like a business plan, so to speak, of, of how, what we could do. And so uh, a group of people in the parish latched onto it, thought it was a great idea. That's cool. And you, and you were like, all right, this will be, uh, be something I could help with or get involved with. Oh, yeah. Particularly because of the music. So what is your particular role? Like uh, if you're going to – how do you select – so you go out and see bands, or you look for bands. Does it go up to a vote, or how do you how do you go about it? Yeah, usually we get we get a um, we get a suggestion. So originally it was by Steve Dedman, okay. and now Ray has been our point person for giving us suggestions for bands. And so like Ray will come back and say, "I've, I've got these." several bands and sure. we'll talk a little bit about them and we'll talk about it in the co- in the committee and then we'll say well let, let, let's let's go for the center line band and yeah, s- right. see what we, see what we can make happen with them cool cool you guys have a pa over at the church who does sound uh carol's husband jim and i oh okay yeah we have quite a system 36 channel okay so dave he, he's nodding so dave must know no, something yeah, Oh, cool. Okay. It's really nice. It's kind of a plug and play. You really don't. You really don't have to bring a lot of your stuff except for your your instruments. The bands love that because they don't have to bring a sound engineer, or right. sometimes bands bring two. Sure. And uh, so they don't have to do that because we take that role for them. Yeah, and that's like cool. Carol just mentioned, that <laughs> eliminates bringing a lot of extra equipment. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I played with them. Um, Christine Ullman up in Willimantic, some sort of thing like that. They have a church that does concerts. It was cool. It sounds like similar to what you guys are talking about. That's the bread box, right? That's the bread box. Yeah, yeah. we've we've been there. Uh, cool. They they do a great job. Cool. Yeah. So it's that sort of thing. <laughs> cool. And they get you. And you can crank it up. Oh yeah. To <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> a lot of people in the audience don't like that. They like Uh-oh. something that's. You know more. Well, then that's tolerable. that's where folk night comes in, yeah, kind of well, or whatever, right? I don't know. It's sort of like everybody is different. You have the sure, a hundred people listen to the same thing, and some will tell you it's loud and right. Yeah, there's always it's always somebody. Our crowd tends to be um, on the older side. Sure. So, so it's already too loud. Even before it starts, it's too <laughs> loud. <laughs> Hey. In some cases, um, I, I don't know, maybe when they were young, they listened to too much you know, loud music, and sure. they've lost part of their hearing, so they don't want to have too loud. You must be a drummer. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Drummers, yeah. I get loud. Yeah. yeah, you got that right. Yeah. Now, is, is the Jarvis family uh, one of your benefactors? Oh, the Jarvis family is one of our benefactors for the church. They primarily, we would not be still around if we didn't have um, the Jarvis family helping us with things like the roof and the furnaces and the stained glass windows. They're not underwriting the, the music system, the music program, but you know, now that you say that, maybe we'll give them a ringy dingy. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? A, a local contractor? Is that what you're talking about? It's a local family. Jo- okay, the Jarvis family we're talking about. Yes. That's cool. So they get involved and help out. Yeah, they're, they're, they are, um, <coughs> like I said, we, it's an old, old church, and it requires a lot of, of maintenance. Sure. And with the resources that we have, with the number of people that we have, there's no way that we could keep the church open. And they have stepped in and, and have done things like roofs and furnaces. And oh, that's cool. We also have a, a sound system. 
uh, not a sound system, a, a air filtration system. When COVID came in, we went and got we right. were able to install one of these air. I don't whoops. It's okay. Air. Um, I don't know. It mixes the air. Yeah, up. it's like an air purification. Uh, sure. So that's available in our in our space. Wow. Hey, that's pretty cool. Oh, yes. Yeah, my, my daughter took lessons there. Oh, okay, so Dave is off camera saying um, that his wife taught, they had, they used that space for, for dance classes. The basement, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah, and my daughter did that for, I think, four years, maybe five years. Wow, okay. That's cool. So it's a, the community center, that's kind of the point. One of the points, <clears throat> what you're trying to get going over there. That's pretty cool. You also work with AA, right? Yeah, yeah we're, we have a very strong presence presence with um, with twelve step programs, both NA and NA. Okay. And we have a number of meetings. In fact, during COVID, we were one of the few places that you could go. Um, a lot of sure. places closed. A lot of churches closed. You know, sure. no one was allowed in. So I, I think we saved some lives because we had we had about fourteen meetings going within the week. And um, wow. we did not shut down, and we, we take that as a, as a point of pride. And, yeah. and right now, in, in the basement area, where Rana used to do her dance yeah. lessons, right now we have something called the Phoenix. And the Phoenix is a, a kind of a 12-step. It's not a 12-step program, but it offers a place for people who are in recovery to do normal types of things or to take a class or to have uh, karaoke or do do crafts and just have somewhere to go and something to do sure sure that sounds great that's cool you kept it all kept it all going through covid that's awesome all right what else do you want to tell us you want to tell us anything else you got a bunch of notes yeah well just just some of the yeah, i'm please. looking at some of the um Causes that we we contributed to sure. from the uh, from the uh, concerts and uh, we did we gave uh, Middlesex Land Trust a couple of big checks and they they protect uh, land from being developed gotcha. in in the Middlesex County and two other counties which I forget we've contributed to wo wounded warriors oh nice we've contributed to the Portland Fire Department uh, the people of Ukraine. The Portland feed, uh, Food Bank. Um, I'm not sure what this was, but it, we've got it written here, the Sunrise Foundation. Yeah, I think, I, if my memory serves me right, that could be a, a abuse, um, a, a, like a woman's battered shelter. That sounds right. I, yeah. I believe that's what that was. That, okay. was. that was a long time ago. So there's, there's been quite a few different causes that we we've uh, contributed to that's cool and essentially after we pay the band off the rest of the money goes to the cause yeah right right <clears throat> how do you who determines what the causes are our committee yeah we, we'll discuss okay the various people will come up with ideas and we'll, yep. we'll weigh them and um, this this one we liked uh for, for several reasons, and one of the better ones, uh, one of the better reasons I think is that they, most of the money goes to the actual yeah, right. cause. Yeah, that's cool. What were some of the, the most, uh, well, I mean, without throwing anyone else under the bus or whatever, what were some of your favorite shows that you can mention, either of you? Say mine or? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I have one that I, re I really enjoyed, oh <laughs> and that, that was the Great Hill Mountain Band. I agree. Uh, they were fabulous, and the, the crowd was great, and they were engaging, and uh, they were they were fun to listen to. And I'll tell you, they were easy to work with. Uh, that, that's very cool. easy to work with. I think I've had a few of them in here. Probably, yeah. You I have, think so. yeah. I went, I went and looked at the, a list of who has been on this. Oh, boy. And... and <laughs> I did a little bit of research. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. So that was a good one. Yeah, and and, and a couple of reasons. Well, they had they were talking to us in the beginning about doing. A, I think it was their thirtieth year of being together, and they were going to make T-shirts. Oh, okay. And we put them, I think, <coughs> over the edge, 
and they wound up uh, do, making T-shirts, and on the back they had all the places they played, and they had oh, that's right. Trinity Church on the bottom. Right, right. And uh, they gave us a portion of that money. Oh, hey, that's cool. For, for the, uh, for, for actually, that went to uh, the Middlesex Land Trust. Oh, well, that's nice. Okay. That's cool. So they got into it, too, got into the spirit. Very much, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Yeah, that's nice. I think most of the bands we've had have been pretty enjoyable. I know the charades, we've had them back twice. Yep. That was very popular. They they have a, a following of people. I, I handle uh, the tickets, okay. and so I, I hear from the from people who are interested in tickets, and they'll tell me, you know, how much they love this band, and they can't wait for the show to to happen, and they were they were excellent. That's cool. Where are they from? I don't know if I know them. Well, I would say now New Britain would be where they're. Okay. They're in, I, I d- the, unfortunately, a couple of their founders uh, passed away. Oh, so boy. So this is sort of like a second generation of them. I got you. What kind of stuff do they do? They do, they do rock and roll, a lot of doo-wop, 50s. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and some, uh, I would say maybe some 70s, but they're an they're, uh, old school band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Pretty cool. Who else? I thought Paul Sarah uh, band was good. That was country, mostly country, and he w- he was an engaging guy, mm-hmm. and uh, he really he had a good time. We had really bad weather that that evening, so that cut into uh, yeah. our our attendance. But when when I, I can't remember where it is that he plays, but he he has a huge crowd virtually every week. Do you remember where he plays? Oh, yeah. Plays? No, I've seen him up there. He plays up in Vernon, and uh, I, I've seen him up there several times. He he uh, actually won uh, the Connecticut uh, Country Hall, or is in the Connecticut Country Hall of Fame. Oh, that's cool. And he's another fellow who's been around a while. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, anyone else that springs to mind? or? I, I'd say that. The, um, the hot flashes were good. That is, uh, <laughs> the a- hot flashes. A- Amy, Amy Gallatin, Amy hop- Gall- yeah. yeah. Oh boy. Okay. It, that w- she, they put on quite a hopping show. It was really, it was really fun, and they also had a, a large following of very enthusiastic um, followers and fans. Menopausal women. Yeah, they they yeah. they. They, they said I the just men- said it. I, I mm-hmm. said they I was thinking the, it, and then the I the menopause. They call it the men in the in the group. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so uh, it's almost anything goes, kind of when you w- when you're looking for acts. Yes. Just kind of like whatever. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the criteria is that we need to get a reasonable break in the fee in order to be able to have a decent profit for the cause. So right. We, we try to match the band up with the cause. Sure. Uh, where they're into it also. And sure, that, sure. That's, we've been r- very successful with that. Yeah, that's helpful. Yeah, that's cool. Um, what else? What else do you want to talk about? Um, you're just going to keep it rolling. You're going to keep finding guests. You're going to keep keep it going. That's our That's our plan. Um, is to keep it going and you know we have uh, fewer shows in the past couple of years but we have a very uh, small group of people that are, are helping with this so we're just we're just trying to, to put on as many as we we physically can and is there a set schedule or just whenever you can find like is there is it is there a schedule well a little bit we have to find a uh, weekend that there isn't something else going on in the church. Yep. Uh, in fact, we had another band in mind, but they we couldn't coordinate a date when when we could do it at the church. Uh, so there's some of that. I, I wanted to mention something too that I forgot to to say that I think this is kind of a neat touch on this show. We have somebody coming in from Middlesex vocal chords, going to sing the national anthem a cappella uh-huh. as an opening. Nice. And I think that's a nice touch for Veterans Day. Yeah. Oh, right. For the veteran show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's cool. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Mm. Pretty cool. Um, do you want to uh, you want to talk about your music uh, career, so to speak? Or uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, there's not money, not much money in it, but it's been a lot of fun. Right. Well, yeah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> so, grew up around here? No, I grew up in the Bronx. Oh, okay. Right. And uh, I will have trouble remembering where uh, one of my friends played, but it was in uh, New Jersey. And uh, the way I started uh, learning the guitar was playing rhythm guitar for him while he practices leads. Sure. And that was back in the time when the Beatles were coming out and I was learning all the Beatles songs. Yeah, right. Well, at least you didn't get stuck playing bass. That's usually how, <laughs> how it used to be. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And that, so that's how it started with you? Yes. Yeah. And then what? Um, I don't know. I just always enjoyed it. I, I sure. had gaps where I wasn't playing. And then I mentioned uh, I, form, I didn't form it myself, but a few friends. We formed this other band I've been in for quite a few years now. And we, we play. We're pretty eclectic. We play just about everything. Oh, yeah. And what's it called again? For Fun. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, what do you got on the... Uh on the schedule with with that band the the uh the town of east hampton is trying some experiment with us next friday and they've asked us to come down to the sears uh park in east hampton and, and play sure that's pretty cool and so, what about the uh the folk thing like what's that all about um we we uh essentially cover uh various masses for trinity okay for sometimes uh, for example carol will do what we call a morning prayer which is better if carol explains that but during during the morning prayer we don't have a, ch a priest and carol will do the service and my folk group will come in and do the songs in between oh, right. you were the before. the various stages of the mass and we try to match the songs to the message yeah right right if you want to explain a little bit more about morning prayer sure well, morning prayer, it, it's basically a, a, a prayer. Um, usual, our usual services are, are very much like a Roman Catholic service where you have a Mass and you, ha you celebrate the Eucharist and there you, you have readings and then you do the Eucharist. But when you, we don't have a priest, we don't have anyone to <coughs> bless the elements. So we have an alternative prayer service that can be led by lay leaders. And we have several people at Trinity Church who are able to uh, create the service and uh, lead it, and you know select help select the music, and also do a short homily, which is a, it's like a sermon, but it, it shouldn't be more than seven minutes. So people like that. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> That's funny. And you were doing that. Uh, how did you learn to do that? How did you get involved in that? I I've been doing that. Um, in one capacity or another for about 35 years. Oh, okay. Um, but we've been doing it a lot. Because um, we don't have a priest. Because you don't have a priest, right. So, um, so it, it's not anything that was brand new, except the homily part. We, we usually didn't do homilies, but now most of the people who lead morning prayer will uh, say a few things about the, the readings or something that's on their mind that's, re that's related to our uh, situation. I got gotcha. you. Why seven minutes? Because people lose, uh, uh, they kind of drift off. Yeah, right. right. So, like, e even a ser like I have a personal preference that a sermon not be more than ten minutes. Yeah, because right. Because I don't need to hear it three times. I don't need the message three times. I got it the first time. Right. Well, I'm sure some people might need to hear it more than three times. Who knows? Who even knows? It's funny. Um. All right, well, that, that's pretty cool. So what else? We got to find other things to talk about real quick. Well, one, um, of, one, I, of, one of the things that uh, I'd like to mention sure. is uh, one of the causes that we, we did a concert for a number of years ago was Street Fire Ministries. And Street Fire Ministries is a church without borders. Okay. It's, it's a church that's right on the streets of Middletown. And on Saturday, on Saturday afternoons, uh, those that don't have homes or those that are, are really, you know, not particularly economically well off can come down to a, a street service and you get a meal. I see. And, you know, some drinks and then there's, there's uh, clothing that's available. They also do a similar type of thing 
on a Thursday night. So some of our parishioners are very involved with Street Fire Ministries, and you know, I, I personally will be asking that in the future we do a, a concert that the beneficiary will be um, Street Fire Ministries. It, it's a wonderful ministry, and it you know, it's certainly saving lives, and you know, it, it's not a pressure type of thing uh, for the people that are involved. And that's um, non-denominational, or is that Episcopalian? It is not Episcopalian. Okay. Um, um, uh, pastor Watson from Middletown, um, he's the pastor, and then we have they have a director, and it, it's not it's non-denominational. It's just a, a short message from God, and then you get to eat a delicious meal and get goodies and gotcha and then there's music they they have they have a band every single week they have a what they call call like a house band and they provide music during the the service it's quite moving i've personally participated a few times and it's a great experience hey that's cool so maybe yeah like you say maybe they'll be the the beneficiary at some point of your uh of one of your shows mm-hmm. cool that's pretty cool yeah all right anything else i could ask crazy questions well no. do we want to talk a little more about what we come got coming up the show i mean i don't know if we mentioned that we have a halftime break okay with these shows and and uh the the people of our church they all bake cookies and cakes and breads and all sure. of that and that's all available uh, to to the to whoever's in, at the show during the break. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's essentially free, but if they want to make a donation, they could. Yeah, that's cool. That's pretty cool. You get everybody involved. Yes, yeah, so I think it's a nice touch. Yeah, why not? It's nice for the for people that are there, especially those that that are from the community. It, it's a good time for them to touch base, and they you know they chat with a friend or. Or a couple friends, they see people they might not ordinarily see during their their regular course of life. So it really it, it's a fun type of thing for the people who are attending the shows. Yeah, that's cool. It's pretty cool. So, yeah. So this is going to be a great show. It's got a little bit of everything. Yeah. How far ahead are you booked? Um, we we're doing a little bit of an experiment this time, and Ooh. we're not going to get any prepaid tickets. Well, I'll take the money, but um, most of we're, we're doing, instead of having an advance price and a, then a regular uh, day of show price, we're having one price. It's $15 to attend the show. You can call and, and reser- reserve um, tickets, and if you want to pay ahead of time, you can do that. But uh, otherwise, I'll have you on a list, and you can just come at, to the box office, and you can pay for your tickets then. So I, I have... Um, not a whole lot, but I, I, I do have some advanced tickets. So let me put a plug in. If you want to get a ticket, I'm going to give you a, a phone number and an email. Uh, phone number, 860-463-6444. You'll probably just have to leave a, a message. And the, the email is Trinity Vital connections at gmail.com okay and that's to get advanced tickets yeah if you want to get get your name on the list because we sure we can only hold so many i don't quite remember the number yeah, that right. we can we can hold but we want to make sure that uh, we have an indication of how many uh, people are coming we'll also have some paper tickets to sell in advance starting probably in about a week or so. I haven't printed them out yet. Yeah, right. I got gotcha. you. Did you ever uh, sell out? You ever have to turn people away? No. No? Not yet? Not yet. Not yet, but we will. Yeah, right. Although we think this time we will. Yeah. <laughs> sure. With the uh, Center Lion Band, they're going to pack them in for you? You never know. You where never did you know. Where did you see them? Um, I most recently I saw them um, uh, this summer in uh, Newington. Oh, cool! And um, uh, the lead member uh, used to be a resident of Portland. Okay. I think he told me he moved out about ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Where were they playing? Because I live in Berlin. The park there in Newington. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Sure. Do you remember the name of that? No, not off the top of my head. I haven't been there that long. So, yeah, but yeah, next time over. Cool. Um, I have, um, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know how relevant they are um, particularly, but I'll ask them anyway because I have, you know, wrap up questions. Um, I don't know who, who wants to go first, but um, do you, can you name maybe like, five favorite albums i call them like desert island albums like you know albums that you would listen to only if you were on a desert island that you'd be satisfied with anybody want to go yeah I w- i'll tell you virtually anything by arlo guthrie <laughs> i was a huge huge arlo guthrie wow. uh, fan i went to a, a tons of his concerts uh one of them that was really great was up in the Springfield Music Hall. It's like a little symphony hall. Sure. It, it was excellent. But, but my husband and I were, have been big fans, and uh, we've seen him probably 10, 12 times at, at various wow. venues. I hate to say it. Is he still around? Yes, he's still alive. Okay. He's still around. Uh, he has retired. He's, he is not performing. Oh, now. Okay. That, that's a recent thing. Okay. I think within the past year he, he has stopped performing. Okay. When was the last time you saw him? Um, probably, let's see, I saw him, I think, in New London at the Guard Theater. Sure. Probably six six years or so ago. Wow. How did you ever get into that? I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, I graduated high school from in 1970, so Arlo right. was a you know, big Woodstock you know, sure. performer and sure. and uh, we would go to the Berkshires. Cause I, I was living in the Simsbury Canton area at the time, and we would go up to the. He he was at the at Tanglewood, and sure. uh, so that's how we got into to liking to liking him. So that's that's some albums I like. Yeah, right, right. What else comes to mind? I can't think of the albums, but it, virtually anything by Tom Petty. Sure. But unfortunately, Tom's no longer with us. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I love Tom Petty. Yeah, I saw him with Bob Dylan. Uh, oh, wow. A number of years ago. Hey. Quite, quite a few years ago. It, that was up at the Hartford Civic Center. Oh, and wow. It was, it was exciting. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I saw him um, at the Meadows. I don't know how long ago it would have been. Um, you know maybe 10 years or more Mm -hmm. but yeah i i saw him there at the meadows it was great it was really it was really something else i also saw jim and i saw bob dylan a number of times as well um i think one of my favorite concerts there was at the bushnell he had just got undergone a religious revival sure feeling and he was he was playing uh, songs from I think it was Saved and I can't remember the other album, mm-hmm. but he had some friends come up from uh, New York and they were heckling him throughout the whole show and that was that was kind of entertaining. But he he really he put on a great show. Yeah, <clears throat> I bet. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm uh, I'm listening to everything that Bob Dylan did. I have this big giant book that goes song by song and I decide this is the year I'm going to listen to everything and I'm literally right up to the his uh born again years oh. in the 80s saved album train train to come in and yep. I'm trying to think of what some of the other ones were but yeah they're all good it's all good I'm not I'm not post that yet so I don't know I don't know what happens but we'll find out anything else that you could think of, or that's that's I'll, good. I'll let Ray talk. Okay, all right, go for it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to name particular albums either, but I will name some bands. Sure. CCR is one of my favorites. Sure. My band does a lot of their stuff. Cool. They're, they're great. Uh, the Beatles. Yeah. Elvis. Yeah. I actually saw Elvis at Madison Square Gardens at in his prime. Wow. Yeah. In the eleventh yeah. row. Wow. <laughs> that that's heavy. Great. Oh, yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Beach Boys. Sure. And the Eagles are another favorite. Sure. We do a lot of Eagles. That's cool. So yeah. Those are my favorite groups. Yeah, cool. That's cool. Take it easy. Say what? Take it easy. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. 
The first concert I ever went to was a Beach Boys concert at the Bushnell. There you go. That was a long, 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 yeah, long, no, long no, time. I was going to ask what year, but <laughs> I guess I won't. Yeah. That's cool. Who was with him? Mike I Love and say what? Who was with him back then? Were they the originals? Or? Oh, it was the originals. Oh, yeah, okay. it definitely was, was the originals. Sure. Yeah, I saw him, uh, again, I don't know how long ago it was. I mean, it might have been 10 years, but probably the last time that they all, because it was Brian and, you know, pretty much everybody except, you know, the other two Wilsons. Um, and that'll never happen again, you know, and I was there at Mohegan Sun. Hmm. It was wild. It was really something, you know. Yeah, that's great music in my opinion. Yeah, sure. Definitely. Um who wants to uh, name uh, a show that completely blew their mind and changed their whole their whole ideas of what things could be in one shot? Anything that comes to mind. <clears throat> a musical show? Sure. Concert. Yeah, concert. Or, you yeah, know. Let me go first. Yeah. I'll give you a wild card. Okay. The Ed Sullivan Show. Yeah, right. Sure. I thought that was great because they would put groups on there like the Rolling Stones. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was incredible back then yeah. to, to do something like that. Pretty cool. I, I will say that uh, Jim and I are fans of the band over the year, over the, over the years. And um, one of the highlights that we had musically was we went up to Levon Helm's home. There you go. And they have a very small area where you have an intimate type of um, performance given. And, and we <coughs> went up there, and Levon w was trying to sing. Well, he sang sure. pretty good, but he had had the, uh, I think it was throat problems, sure. uh, the cancer or whatever. And um, we, we enjoyed that, and that really was uh, uh, a great life experience. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah, I... Um I'm a big fan too. I ne I never got up there. I was gonna um, bring my dad up there, and um, that was kind of the plan. I, it's kind of a long story, but I, I I probably have told this story every time the subject of the band comes up. But I have an uncle in Pittsburgh who's a musician, and he. I, I mean, I don't know how how much you know about this uh, music trivia, but. The summer that Bob Dylan called the band up, they were playing at a place called Tony Martz in, at, I, I don't know if it was Asbury Park, but anyway, it was in New Jersey. And my uncle was in a band called the Skyliners, and they were on the bill with Levon and the Hawks when they got the call. So my uncle's been friends with Levon, was friends with Levon, like, since they were, you know, uh, youngsters. And um, I was always trying to get my uncle and my dad together so the three of us could go to the barn to see Levon and um my dad passed away first and then Levon passed away and that was that but trying to get that together that was going to be the plan was the three of us to go we never got to so that's really cool that you got to go oh. it, it was a, it was a great experience and I do know that occasionally they have midnight rambles there yeah and um I, I don't know if it's his daughter that plays I but think so there's some some other folks that play uh, I also wanted to do a, like a shout out to the Kate tomorrow night. Larry Campbell and his wife Teresa right. are playing, right. and um, we've seen them a number of times. Uh, they're they're very enjoyable, and uh, they have some great stories, especially Larry, with his experiences with Bob Dylan. Sure, yeah, I can imagine. <clears throat> yeah, that must be wild. Pretty cool. Um. Is it, that's it for mind blowing shows? Hmm, I guess. Well, I mean, I already mentioned the Elvis show. That was great to yeah. see him in Madison Square Garden. Yeah, that was. This is back when uh, the ladies would rush the stage and they'd have to carry him off. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that that be, that's pretty wild. That's got to be exciting, kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> desert island food. Weird question. Shrimp. Shrimp. With no hesitation. Shrimp. Mm -hmm. Any any old way? Um, I like it with um, 
stuff. I don't like baked stuffed shrimp, but okay. I, I will eat it just with a little bit of that red sauce on it. So hey, that's not that's not hard to do. What do you got? Lasagna. Oh, okay. All right. But whose though? My wife's. Yeah, of course. That's she, the correct answer. No, no, it's true. She <laughs> makes a wonderful lasagna. Uh, she made it last year, and in fact, she's making it. We're doing a stewardship campaign, and she's agreed to make the lasagna for our uh, stewardship luncheon. Hey, there you go. See what I'm saying? You can check that out. That's if any of it makes it to the church. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, she forgot. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. All right. Well, you know, I mean, we could go. Is there anything else you want to add that you want to talk about that we didn't talk about? No, I'm good. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you sure? I, I've got something that for any of your listeners out there, if they have any type of reluct reluctance to come to our concerts because it's in a church, it might be sacrilegious. Sure. Just drop that thought right then and there. Oh, nice. Okay. All Just right. walk on in and, and have a good time. Right. Non judgmental, mm -hmm. ready to rock and roll. Right. Yeah. Yes. I like it. I like it. So remind me again where it is, what it is called, the, the, the Trinity Church concert series. Is that what we call it? What do we call it? Well, sometimes we call it the Brownstone Music Series. Okay. Sometimes we call it Vital Connections Through Music. It used to be called Trinity Concert Series, but we've changed the name to Brownstone because a lot of people associate our church with the Brownstone. If you say, you, oh, we go to the Episcopal Church, they'll say, well, which one's that? Oh, you know the Brownstone right. one? And they'd be, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. So you might as well just call it Brownstone. Right. Gotcha. So we're at 345 Main Street right in Portland. and uh, That way. It's Sunday, November 10th at 4 p.m. Okay. And it's the Center Lion Band. Yes. Cool. Cool. What else? That's it? Does that cover it? You think we're good? Yep. Are I you think sure? So. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Be there or be square, you know? Uh, you said the, the shows are in the afternoon? This one's at 4 p.m. Okay. All right. That's a good hour. That's a good hour. All right. Cool. Well, you know, you never know. Um so go check out the, uh, it's the Brownstone Church. Everybody knows where it is. It's up the road from here, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, hey, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Uh, we have Roy Phillips, Carol Hill. We're here from uh, Trinity Church up the road. The Brownstone one. The Brownstone one, right? Right. Okay. November 10th, right? Yep. Center line band. Okay. All right, I'm going to I'm going to hit the theme. You're going to hear music and it goes like this. Thanks for coming guys. I appreciate it. John Peckman podcast, Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance, beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut. Come over the bridge, go through one set of lights. Pull a Yui unless you're already here. Then you can just kind of park in front of the joint, you know. Uh, go to the uh, concert series at the Brownstone Church. November 10th is the next one with the Center Line band. Thanks a lot for coming you guys. I appreciate it. All right, thanks. That is all. If you'd like to start your own podcast, give us a call at Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance. Our professionally designed podcast space is here for all your recording needs. Rent out our studio to do interviews with up to four people to record audiobooks, social media content, and all other recorded material. Our rentals include a private studio along with our professional-grade podcasting equipment and we can customize your output to whatever your needs are. We also have green screen capabilities, which will expand to uh, video capability if you so wish. So check us out here at convalley.net forward slash podcast.